Hey guys, and welcome to my very first Blender Blast episode, where I want to show you something really cool that you can do in Blender without boring you for a full 30 minutes. Now, in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use environment textures in Blender, which are spherical textures that wrap around your 3D scene and provide really nice looking lighting and reflections to all of your objects. In this video, I want to show you we can get some really great looking and absolutely free environment textures online, how to bring them into Blender and set them up within your 3D scene, and then I'll show you how to customize them using the shader editor. Now, this is going to be a low intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you are at least familiar with the very basics of how Blender works. If you're just getting started, I highly recommend go and check out my absolute beginner tutorial series for Blender first. The link to that I'll drop you down in the video description, so be sure to check that out first before you come back here. Also, if you're interested to get your hands on some free training courses for Blender, After Effects, Premiere Pro and more, go and check out all of the courses that I offer on my academy at academy.surfacestudio.com. And if you'd like to support me by purchasing one of my premium courses, be sure to use coupon code YouTube underscore blast to get 30% off everything. But now, before I waffle on forever, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of Blender. I have a very simple 3D scene set up here with just a little house model, a light and a camera. Now, I do firmly believe in giving credit where credit is due and I didn't create this model myself. I actually got it off of Blender Swap, which is probably one of my favorite resources to find free 3D models for all sorts of projects and my weird tutorials. It's been created by GMR Mark Videos, so thank you very much. Really love this model, looks absolutely beautiful. Now, all I've done here is import it into a scene, simplify the lighting, I actually stripped all the materials off as well so I can show you how environment textures work. As always, if you do want to just follow along with this tutorial, you will be able to download this very file from my website. So simply go to surfacestudio.com forward slash downloads and you'll be able to grab this file in the exact state that I'm starting out here, just so you can follow along. Now, let's switch over to rendered view. And you can see I'm using the Cycles rendering engine, which just works better for reflections and light bounces, so environment textures just look nicer. The scene looks pretty cool already, even though it really is just a single light lighting up our scene. So let's add an environment texture to actually create light all around as if this house was really out in the wilderness somewhere. For that, let's come over to the right hand side into the properties panel. And in here, let's go to the world properties. And in here, you'll actually find an option for the surface. And this is essentially the background to be used for your 3D scene. Right now, this is set to color, which is just a dark gray color. You can actually click on this and change this to any color that you want. So let's change this to, for example, like a bright green. And you can see the background is now green and the house is actually lit with that green light. It's as if your house was sitting in a green light box and all of the light is coming from that. Now, while that looks pretty cool already, let's change this to an actual environment texture. And in order to use an environment texture, you need a spherical texture that you can wrap around in the 3D world in Blender and that will then provide lighting and reflection information for all of the 3D objects in your scene. Now, one of my favorite sources for free HDRI textures that you can just download and use in any way that you want is, it's now called Polyhaven, it used to be called HDRI Haven. I'm going to drop you the link to that down in the video description, there's tons and tons of really cool looking spherical maps that you can then use in your 3D scene to light up your objects. The one I'm going to use is this Sprout Sunrise file right here. So simply come over to the right hand side, change this over to any resolution you want. I've downloaded the 8K file. You can either download it as a .hdr, which is a bit more compatible, or an .exr file, which is higher quality, and then simply download this file to your hard drive. In Blender, in order to use this environment texture, in the world properties, on the color property over on the right hand side, let's click on this little circle to bring up a whole bunch of different options. And in here, you now have an option to connect an environment texture to the color property. Let's click that. That's going to turn everything nice and pink because we haven't selected a texture just yet. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Let's simply hit open to open an environment texture. Then navigate to where you downloaded that HDR file to. I've got it here, sprout underscore sunrise underscore 8K dot HDR. Let's simply hit open image. And that might take a second while the texture loads. And now our 3D scene is lit by that environment texture which wraps spherically around our whole 3D scene. I'm going to select my light, press X and delete that because I don't really need to see it. Also, if you're finding that the environment texture is a bit too bright in the properties for this texture, you can now reduce the strength. So maybe let's say I only want it to be 0.8% brightness. And that's going to just dim that a little bit. Also, if you now render out your 3D scene, you will see the environment texture in the background of that render. If you don't want that to happen, let's close the render window, come into the render properties, 
pop open the film properties here and in here you'll find an option for transparent. So enable that. So the background will be transparent when you render this out, but the lighting from the environment texture is still going to be applied onto that building. Let's select the cute little building, come into the material properties. Let me just make this a little bit reflective. So I'm going to bring up the metallic property just a little bit, specular up and roughness down a little bit. Because I want to show you that you can now actually see the texture being reflected in the building. So see, you've got grass on the bottom. So that environment texture is providing both reflections as well as lighting for your entire scene. Let me just bring the roughness up a little bit again, otherwise it just starts looking a little bit weird. Let's come back to the render tab and disable the transparent option in the film tab, just so we can see the environment texture again. And well, what if I wanted to change where the light is coming from? What if I actually wanted to rotate this environment texture or make it smaller or adjust it or tweak it? If you come into the world properties, you can't do that in here. You do need to go into the shader editor for that. And while I have a separate tutorial on the shader editor that I'm going to link you down below and recommend you check that out, let's just do that right now. It's actually pretty straightforward. Let's come to the top of the 3D view to this horizontal bar here until your cursor changes into the two arrows pointing up and down. Right click, select to create a horizontal split. Let's just split our viewport in two. And on the top one, I'm going to change this over from a 3D viewport into the shader editor. And if you come in here, this will right now show you the material of the selected object, so of our house model. That's not really what I want to change. I want to change the environment texture itself. For that, in the shader editor over on the top left hand side, right now this is set to object. Let's pop this open and change this over to world. So this is going to show you the material assigned to the background of your world. And that's, if you zoom in here, our HDR input texture, going into a background node and then rendered as the environment texture. We now want to change the transform on this input texture and how this is mapped and how this is wrapped around our 3D scene. In order to do that, let's zoom out of the shader editor a little bit, we need to add two nodes. With the cursor over the shader editor, press Shift and A, or you can just come into the Add menu here as well. In Input, you'll find this texture coordinate here. Let's click that. That's going to let us drop in a new node. So let's drop that to the left of our environment texture. Let's zoom in a little bit by scrolling up on the mouse wheel. Let's Click on the dot next to generate it. That's going to give us a connector. We can now connect that to the input vector on our texture. So we're going to change how we're mapping this environment texture into our 3D world. But right now, nothing changed because we haven't changed how that maps. For that, we need to add another node. So let's come up into Add. And in the vector category, you will now find a mapping node. Let's click on that. It's going to let us drop this node and I'm going to drop that right on the connector between the texture coordinate and the actual texture. That's going to auto connect itself. Let's drop that in. So it's connected, generated output of the texture coordinate is now going into the vector for the mapping and the output of that mapping is going into our vector for how we're mapping this environment texture into our 3D world. And still nothing has changed, but now we can actually change these properties on the mapping to influence how that texture is mapped. So let's say the sun is right now over on the right hand side. I can now change this rotate Z property. And as I drag this around, you can see that I can now actually change the position of that environment texture. You can also play with the scale itself to stretch the image, to zoom it, to scale it, or do all sorts of crazy things within this mapping node to essentially adjust how that environment texture is going to be mapped around your 3D world. The cool thing with the shader editor is you can now also add filters, blurs, color adjustments and all sorts of other things into that environment texture to tweak how that environment texture affects your 3D objects. Let's right click onto this horizontal line that we've created, select join areas, drag up, click to collapse that panel. Let's zoom back in, come back into the render properties and re-enable transparent. Let's once again hit F12 to render this out. And this looks really cool and hopefully this gives you everything you need to add and use environment textures with the new 3D scenes in Blender. And that is all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more. All and any useful links you will find in the video description and please leave any comments, questions or suggestions down below. And for that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.